Hi, I'm Rob Mickelson, Director of Agronomy for Yara in North America. Welcome to our ongoing series of educational videos on nutrient management. Today we'll focus on nitrogen use efficiency. So optimizing nitrogen use efficiency has been a long-standing goal for all sources of plant nutrients. There are many practical reasons to get the most benefit out of any applied fertilizer, including economic, environmental, and societal goals that farmers are now expected to meet. So I wanted to share some thoughts in the next few videos on what nitrogen use efficiency is and what practices can really make a difference in boosting the efficiency of nitrogen use. It's good to remember that the term NUE is sometimes used to refer to nutrient use efficiency, which is clearly not the same as nitrogen use efficiency. The practices needed to maximize phosphorus use efficiency or potassium use efficiency are much different than what I recommend for maximizing nitrogen efficiency. So let's just start with a brief overview of the nitrogen cycle. When you consider all the arrows that are circling around this figure, you can easily get overwhelmed, and too many agronomy advisors tend to avoid these difficult and complex discussions with nitrogen with their clients. On the left side, I listed a few ways that nitrogen can be lost from the field, and on the right side, I listed only a few of the many ways that nitrogen gets added back to the field. So nitrogen use efficiency, in my mind, is best considered about reaching a balance between removals and replacements. And the closer we can get removals to replacement, the better the efficiency is that we can achieve. So as we launch into this discussion of nitrogen use efficiency, just a mention of why we're talking about this subject anyway. We introduce a lot of new nitrogen called reactive nitrogen into the world each year. This NPrint website allows a calculation of how much nitrogen is added in each country of the world. You can see they estimate that the United States, about 37 kilograms or 82 pounds of nitrogen are added per person per year. Now food production is the major contributor to that nitrogen load. On this website, you can also calculate your personal nitrogen footprint based on your specific household, your diet, or your personal behaviors. So we see there's a lot of nitrogen used in the world, a lot of nitrogen fertilizer. Some countries have very high application rates. Some countries have unacceptably low nitrogen fertilizer application rates, but there is a lot of nitrogen used in the world. So in calculating nitrogen use efficiency, it's a good way to measure how we're performing on that farm. When we know the efficiency of our fertilizer use, we can then compare that efficiency with other fields and other farms to know how we measure up and see if there's areas for improvement. However, there's many ways to calculate NUE, methods ranging from fairly simple to those that are very thorough and rather complex. Perhaps the most e common and easiest way to talk about NUE is to consider all the nitrogen that's added to the field and then compare that with the amount of nitrogen removed during harvest. So this approach is called a partial nitrogen balance. It's called partial because it doesn't include all the possible inputs, but only those that are most common. You may be interested to know that in California, many farmers are required to report their partial nitrogen balance on each field every year. They're asked to calculate all of the applied nitrogen and then calculate the amount of nitrogen removed in the harvested crops. So some of these numbers are measured, such as the amount of nitrogen applied in the irrigation water, and others can be estimated, such as the nitrogen content contained in the harvested crops. The state of California set a maximum applied versus removal ratio of 1.4 for their dairy farms. This means that the nitrogen application is not allowed to exceed removal by 40% on these dairies. And this ratio must be reported to the state every year. 
So let's go through a couple examples on how to calculate a partial nitrogen budget for a few crops, starting with this cotton example. On this hypothetical farm, there was 112 pounds of nitrogen removed in the cotton during harvest and 180 pounds of nitrogen applied to the crop. So this calculation gives us a nitrogen efficiency factor of 62% or an AR ratio of 1.61. Let's next look at this more complicated example of broccoli using data from the University of Arizona. In this field, 200 pounds of nitrogen fertilizer per acre are applied as recommended by the university. Only 90 pounds of nitrogen is removed during harvest of the broccoli spears but 250 pounds of nitrogen are taken up by the entire plant per acre. So when we look at the ratio of nitrogen applied to removed, we get a 45% NUE. However, when we look at the total amount of nitrogen uptake compared to that was applied, we get 125% nitrogen recovery. But in the common NUE calculation, we only account for the nitrogen removed from the field, not the additional 160 pounds of nitrogen that was taken up by the plant biomass that was needed to grow those small broccoli spears. So you can start to see how this issue can get complicated. So now the remaining 160 pounds of nitrogen in the crop residue needs to be accounted for in the nutrient plan in the crop that follows the harvest of broccoli. Let's look at just one more example, this time from corn production in the Lake Victoria region of Africa. In this case, they did a complete nitrogen budget, not just a partial budget. They came up with inputs totaling 84 kilograms nitrogen per hectare and outputs of 162 kilograms, of which 97 was in the harvested grain. So when we care, compare nitrogen outputs and inputs of the grain, we get an NUE of 115%. Now this seems like a great accomplishment because we're getting more nutrients out of the soil than we're putting in. But when you consider that when you remove more nutrients out of the soil than you put in, you mine the soil and you start to consume valuable soil organic matter. This results in soil degradation. Running an NUE greater than 90% is not usually a good thing because soils then become depleted and degraded. And degraded soils are all too common around the world. This degradation occurs from a variety of causes, but one of the top reasons is nutrient mining and depletion and the failure to properly maintain that soil nutrient supply. So nitrogen use efficiency is a very helpful indicator of how well we're using these added nutrient sources for crop production. In too many farming scenarios, nitrogen use efficiency is unacceptably low and results in lost income for farmers or perhaps nitrogen leaking into the environment. Similarly, an NUE that exceeds 90% can lead to soil degradation and that is not sustainable either. So it will never be feasible for crops to recover all of the nitrogen fertilizer that's applied to the field due to many complicated biological, chemical, hydrological processes that are taking place in the soil. But there are some very practical steps that we can take to increase nitrogen use efficiency. And we'll discuss some of those in the next video. Well, thanks for joining today. And I look forward to sharing some practical steps for improving nitrogen use efficiency in our next discussion.